Building an IT ecosystem for a business is just expensive. And by IT ecosystem, we mean every single device and technology that keeps a business running. Computer, software application, networks, powering everything from emails to sales. So the job is keeping these IT assets in top shape, maximizing their value to boost business revenue, and most importantly, knowing what, why, and when something is broken to minimize the cost of replacement or workflow disruption. Well, no one ever wants to upset loyal customers with a broken system. FYI, we just briefly described the functionalities of a configuration management system. So, a configuration management system is the process of keeping an eye on your IT assets, covering the answers to these questions. What hardware and software do we own? How old or healthy are they? Are they being overused or underused? Where are they located and who's using them? What value are they bringing to the business? And to answer all these, the configuration management process will need to dive into a pool of data or the database of configuration management. Right, it's the configuration management database. Now you might be thinking, hmm, wait, isn't that the same as IT asset management? Well, not quite. ITAM focuses on the ownership, cost, and life cycle of each asset. CMDB, on the other hand, is all about how those assets work together within your IT environment. Two different goals, same assets. If you want a deeper dive into ITAM, check out our previous video. One moment for definition. A configuration management database, or CMDB, is a centralized repository that stores information about IT assets, such as hardware and software, and their relationships, supporting effective configuration management. Why need CMDB? I mean, it doesn't make sense for a business not to know what computer they have, where it is, or why they have it. Totally understandable. But the knowing part is only true for a small business with, like, 50 laptops assigned to a few staff, some stay in the closet with a router, and a printer has been in the meeting room for over a decade. But for enterprises, most multinational companies are dealing with thousands of employees, thousands of customers across continents. Enterprises like Amazon or Google operate dozens of data centers, each containing thousands of servers. Each can't run without, again, thousands of disks, ports, power supplies, you name it. They are all interconnected, coexisting to deliver their optimized value. Another pain is that those thousands of IT components are being modified, retired, or added consistently. It weeps through every asset and identifies its connections, giving you a clear picture of your IT ecosystem. Key components of the CMDB. Like any database, CMDB stores information. The difference is that CMDB makes sure the info is organized and how they are interconnected. Let's break it down to the basics with three key components, configuration item CIs, CI attributes, and CI relationships. First and foremost, configuration items, or C is. They are the building blocks of a CMDB. A CI is any IT component that needs to be tracked, could be physical hardware like servers, laptops or routers, or software like applications or databases, or even documentation and people across departments. Basically, if it's part of your IT environment, it's probably a CI. Each CI has attributes, the details that describe the component. Attributes might include the CI's name, serial, location, type, and status. The whole purpose of them is for IT teams to manage each CI and analyze how it's performing. For example, knowing a server's location and software version can help you decide if it needs an upgrade. Finally, CI relationships. In most cases, IT components or CIs do not deliver much value, not until they get connected with each other. Remember the pain when you have a computer and it is not yet connected to the internet? So IT components don't work in isolation. They depend on each other to deliver value, and a CMDB maps out how they are connected. The connections between those IT components is the so-called CI relationships. Let's visualize the relationship with an example. Assuming we are building a customer relationship management service, starting with a computer. On its own, the computer seems not very useful. To make it productive, we connect it to a router, which links it to the company network or the internet. To make sure the computer delivers even more value, we let it run a CRM application. 
perfect for managing customer relationships. That app relies on a database system to store and retrieve customer data. The database now runs on a server, likely housed in your company's data center. And to keep everything running, that server needs a steady power supply. If any of these components fail, the CRM service could go down. By mapping these relationships in a CMDB, IT teams can quickly see what's connected and troubleshoot problems faster. And that's the CMDB in a nutshell. It tracks your IT assets, supports their performance, and gives it teams a clear view of your entire ecosystem. This is just a beginning, as in the next video, we will dive deeper into the use cases of CMDB, especially how it contributes to the ITSM process. Thanks for watching and see you next time.